When we look around the world and we kind of see all these challenges that we're facing on such a regular basis over and over, it can feel like it's the worst they've ever been, you know? That whole, that the whole world is kind of like going down the drain. And that abandonment of morality and faith that has become so widespread that when people actually see those who are faithful, they're the ones pointed out as the strange ones. And maybe it's peer pressure, and maybe it's that popular phrase, if you can't beat them, join them. But I can't seem to figure out why people would trade literally an eternity of happiness for a few years of what they think will be freedom, but in reality is misery. But the temptation for those faithful people to think that abandoning your faith and morals and doing whatever it takes to get ahead is the only way to match that perceived happiness of others. But this dilemma is not unique to our world today. I know every single generation that faces problems thinks that it's the worst that it's ever been and it's never been better. You know, it's only gonna keep getting worse. Every generation has faced these things. Every generation thinks that it, their problems are the worst that they've ever been. The devil's been playing this game for a long time. We can look back and just see a glimpse of just one of the many times that it's happened to Israel in our scriptures. The first reading, the book of Zephaniah, he's warning the people of the effects of turning away from God. Countries were always closing in on Israel, coming to destroy them, and when they were faithful and following God's will, God was always guarding them, protecting them. But then their choice to turn away from God and his protection would then surely lead to their destruction. But as we know, these were God's chosen people. He would never leave them totally abandoned. And so he promises in this first reading to preserve that faithful remnant. Those who observe his law, those who are humble before God, and they seek justice. Those are the people who turn to the Lord in the difficult moments and seek refuge in him. And God's always faithful to his people, and he will shelter them with his love. And as we know and we've heard many times, we are his people today. The Lord will be with us just today in the same way as he was with his people Israel, sheltering us, sheltering that faithful remnant among us as well. If we turn to him and seek refuge in him. We hear it in St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, why he chooses us. It's not because we're special or we earned it or because we're the strongest and the best, but because God has poured out his graces abundantly and we've, we have responded to them. We strive to be that faithful remnant that God desires to raise up in the midst of the people and be an example. It's not some exclusive club either. It's not just, oh, well, thanks for responding. You're the best, congrats. No, it's our duty, in fact, to bring other people into relationship with God, helping them to repent, turn back to the Lord, that they might be saved too. So where do we start with that monumental task, you know? How can we form an argument so convincing that it helps people to see the error of their ways and turn back to the Lord? Well, I've, it's not gonna be probably what we say at first. Not gonna be any argument that we can form. It has to start with the fact that we live out in our lives first what we're gonna say. We have to live in that joy that comes from God and following his will. We see a beautiful roadmap obviously laid out for us in the gospel where Jesus gives us the Beatitudes. This way of life that can't help but make you stand out against the culture today. And when others see this life of faith leading to greater joy and fulfillment, it's greater joy and fulfillment than they could even imagine. If they see that, the truth can no longer be denied in their heart then. 
And so we take this time as we gather today to evaluate, you know, how have we been doing in that mission, in that goal that we have of living this life of faith with joy. If someone ran into me on a random day, would they even know that I have this joy from my faith? Do I live it out? Do I have it present on my face? Thank God for the gift of your faith today. Thank God for that gift that you've received of your faith. And then ask him to increase that joy, slowly but surely, working on that relationship with him so that every day we might live in that joy.